What's up, modern setters? I want to know if a five-star Amazon rated under $30 axe, <clears throat> I want to know if it can compare to my Grand Forest Brooks $150 small forest axe. I hope it can. Here's the dilemma. This was a Christmas present. It's around $150. That's a lot of money. It's just one axe. You always need multiple axes. And I don't want to go out and spend 100 to 150 bucks every time I need an axe. And I know you don't want it either. So I'm hoping that this axe, they have it on Amazon for under 30 bucks. I want to know how it compares to this one. There's a few things I don't like about it right out of the gate. So we got to modify it a little bit. I'll show you the edge, flat, it's not sharp. So it's sharpen this up. I don't care for varnish on my handles. It's just not as smooth on the hand. And then they put not just one, but two stickers on here. Actually, there's three stickers that were on here, and then one on the head. That's no good. So we're gonna take the varnish off, remove the stickers, and get this thing sharpened up, and we're gonna go outside. We're gonna compare it to our other axe. I'm just using mineral spirits to take off the stickers. This is what we have here, so that's why I'm using it. If you have goo gone or like a lacquer thinner or something, or nail polish remover, that'll work too. This might take a little bit to get it off. just drives me crazy sometimes when they put stickers all over everything. Do they really think you want to have sticky goo all over your stuff? The handle's fitted nice. Now my vise has hard teeth on it and I don't got the fancy clamps. So it won't mar up wood. So I'm just going to put some cardboard in there. And that'll hold it in there and it'll keep the metal teeth from marring up the wood handle. I'm just going to start with some 100 grit sandpaper. Let's remove this varnish. Now don't get me wrong, I love my small forest axe, but sometimes when you have a nice axe like that and you spend a lot of money on it, you don't want to take it out as much because you don't want to damage it. So if we can get a $30 axe to work as good as that or close, that's going to be even better. Oh, it's already feeling so much better in the hand. The varnish is just, I don't know, like gritty and it's not smooth on the hand. This will slide through the hand so much nicer. Yep, I'm liking this. I might not even have to go any more than 100 grit. That just feels good. We don't want to go too smooth. Let's get this flipped around and we'll get this end cleaned up. Hold on to your axe, you don't want to drop it on your toes. Take your cardboard out. Oh, that's, that's just feeling so nice. We gotta get a little bit more off on the butt end and right here, but all oh, that is, what a difference it makes sanding that. Oh, let's do this for now. Be careful with the axe head being out. You don't want to get yourself. We got to get the bottom side of the handle here.
I must say when I first got this axe from Amazon in the mail, I opened it up and I was like, oh, this thing is just going to be cheesy. It was covered in stickers. The axe is dull, it still is. But the varnish on that handle just made it feel very chinese -y. Is that the right word? Just cheap? But you take that varnish off and you sand it down and that just feels a lot better. I really hope this axe can compare to my small forest axe. If I can get a good axe for 30 bucks, that's going to be awesome. So far it's been a fun little project, just cleaning it up, sanding up the handle. I'm going to put tongue oil on the handle to preserve it, because we have tongue oil. Um, you can use linseed oil, you could use mineral oil, whatever you want to use, whatever you have around your modern homestead is the best thing. We have tongue oil here because that's what we finished all of our floors and the walls in our house with. So that's what I'm going to use. But we're going to go outside and test it before we do that. Just going to finish up sanding the handle a little bit more and then we'll put a nice edge on the axe. I'll take our small forest axe. The handle is pretty close. And we got the palm swell just like this one does. A little bit bigger one right here. I like that. The fit is just as good on the $30 axe as it is this one. Let's look at that again. It's just as nice. It's fit in there nicely. That just feels nice in the hand, smooth. Alright, let's sharpen the axe head now. Not to sharpen this, we're just going to use files. We're going to use what we have here see which one works better. And we just got our card brush to clean off all the filings out of the file. Let's just keep this simple with files and this way if you're out in the field and you need to touch it up, you can. I don't know how good the camera's gonna pick that up, but I'll bring you in and I'll show you what I'm trying to get with the file. See right here, it's almost one edge. We want the whole edge to look like that while we're filing. And then we're gonna take just a sharpening stone to it. So let's keep going. We almost got it. We just got to get a little bit down there on this side. Let's flip the axe over and get the other side sharpened. That way you can see that. This is after the file, before the file. Quite a bit of difference there. Down here it's still kind of thick. But I want to get this side going and see if we can get that edge to meet in the middle better that way. If not, we'll flip it back over and file some more down here. So all in all, down there looks pretty good. I'll come back on this side and file it some more down here. <clears throat> get that evened up. That looks pretty good. A lot better than it did a few minutes ago. So the file card, you just take it and brush your file. It gets all the filings out of the crevices. Do that before you put your file away. My sharpening stone, I have this 
stick stone. This is a 400 grit one. Whatever you have for a sharpening stone is gonna work. It's an ax. You can get it razor sharp if you want. You don't need it razor sharp. You wanna keep a decent edge on it, but you don't need to have it so thin, paper thin, that you can shave yourself with it. It's an ax, it's not a knife. So we're gonna choose our 400 grit. When you're wiping an axe or a knife, wipe it away. Don't wipe it this way. You can cut yourself and don't go like this. It's a sharp edge at this point. Can you hear that? That's nice and sharp. I like that. Let's go take it outside now and give it a try. Keep our fingers crossed. I hope this five star $30 Amazon axe works great. I think it was like $29.97, $29 something. So if we can get this axe to work good, I'll be so excited. I need a new one. I need a bigger one than my small forest axe. And I don't want to spend a lot of money or wait for Christmas this year. Let's take these axes outside and go see how they do. So here's a nice maple tree. Let's try it on this one. The reason we're using this tree is this is a maple tree. This is a maple tree. They're way too close together, so when we finish clearing this area, we're gonna take this maple tree down anyways. So it's a good tree to do our comparison on today. Now that's a good bite. See how good that chops. Now, let's see how the $30 one compares. Now with this ax, we do get a sheath. Which is nice. Let's see, what do you think? It doesn't bite as nice as the other axe. But we are going into some pretty hard wood. So on that maple tree, it wasn't biting in that good, but that's some hard wood. And I'm impressed, the blade is holding up good. It's not chipping, it's not anything that's just a good still edge on it the reason it's not biting in as good as the other one is it's a lot thicker so let's let's try it on this pine tree and see what happens this pine's gonna be coming down anyways it's got a good bite there That makes me feel a lot better about the ax. Now that chopped into the pine tree pretty nice. For a $30 ax, I'm happy with it so far. Let's go test it out on some other things. You're right, let's try the small forest ax on it and see what happens. Fair is fair.
Now that is a nice axe, but do you want to spend 150 bucks on an axe or 30 bucks on an axe? That's the question. All right, let's give it one more test. Let's try splitting some firewood with it. I know it's an ax, it's not a splitting maul, but would it be a good camp ax? Would it be a good all around ax to have at your disposal? I know my Grand Force does not split very well and it's sharp. So if you slip, yeah, you're gonna cut something off pretty bad. This is like razor sharp. Let's see how this one does. Nice piece of dried maple, hard maple. Right, let's grab a better piece. I got plenty to pick from, but I'm not seeing one I like. Hmm. Let's try. I can get this one out. It's like wiggling a loose tooth. Ah, there we go. Let's try some hard maple. I'm liking it for that. Let's get some more. Don't put it in the dirt. But even if since we did, let's check it. It's in the dirt. That's a pretty good, that's some pretty good metal. Let's grab another piece. This is kind of fun. I'll get this bigger one. Got a nasty little burl on the end of it. Let's see how it does. Getting some good penetration. It's starting to split. I can see the crack going. There we go. It's that branch and burl stuff that's really holding it up, but that split it nicely. Let's be fair and give the small forest axe a test. See what this one does is it just likes to stick in. I mean, it's a thin blade, good for chopping. Look how thin that is. Not the best. Anyone anyway, just trying to take off a little sliver, it's cracking. And it still don't want to. It just gets in there way too deep. So for splitting firewood, I don't like using this one. Especially because it's so sharp. If you miss or glance, you'd be in trouble fast. So I try not to use this one to chop firewood. This is definitely for splitting wood, cutting little branches off when you're in the forest. I keep it in my truck for some reason. If a tree blows down in front of me and I need to get home, this would chop it up pretty good. I am liking this sax, but not for the same reason. After running through and using both these axes and comparing them, what are my thoughts? When I first got the $30 axe from Amazon, I just thought it was kind of chinzy and cheesy. The way the handle felt in my hand was not nice. Now that I sanded it and smoothed it up and got the varnish off, it feels good in the hand. Next time I did 100 grit sandpaper, I would go with 80. It's a little bit too smooth right now, but not too bad. I definitely wouldn't go with any higher grit, like 220 or anything. The Grand Frost, the Grand Frost, the, the small forest axe, out of the box, was ready to go. I didn't have to sharpen it. It came with a sheath. It's really sharp. It's good for chopping trees down, branches. Good for that. It's nice and small. It's light. It's expensive. This was 30 bucks. It needed an edge on it. I didn't know how good the metal was gonna be. We chopped some pretty hard wood with it and we split some good wood with it. I put it in the dirt and the edge is still holding up. That is nice. For chopping softwood pines, it works pretty good. 
They're not as good as this one. For the hardwood, this one definitely works really nice. This one, I wouldn't want to chop down a hardwood tree with it. But I wouldn't want to split my firewood with this one either or into smaller pieces. This one, it worked good for it. So it's kind of hard to compare a $150 axe to a $30 axe. They, it's kind of like most tools, they all have different jobs. I am glad I bought this one. We'll be using it for a lot of things that I won't use this one for. This one's a $150 axe. You take care of it a little bit nicer. The $30 axe, you can use it for different things and you're not gonna worry about it as much. You can bring it camping, leave it in your truck. It'd be nice to have a sheath for it, so I'll have to figure out a way to make a sheath for it. The edge held up really nice with just filing it and and then hitting it with a 400 sanding stone, you could go sharper, but you don't want to. I don't want to. I'll be using it this winter quite a bit to chop up my firewood and get it smaller. I can use it for kindling. It's a little bit longer of a handle for kindling, but I can just choke up on it, and it'll work nice for the kindling. Yeah, it's a really good axe for 30 bucks. I'm impressed. Makes a good little project for you to do on a weekend with your kids, cleaning it up and putting an edge on it, teaching them about it. And if you have a kid and you want to teach them how to use an axe, this is a good beginner axe. So I guess the big question is, would I buy the axe again? Hands down, yes. Right out of the box, you gotta do some modifications with it. It's not shop at all. And the way the handle fails in your hand is terrible. But spend a half hour to an hour cleaning it up, making it a nice little axe. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, it really helps. Leave it down in the comments below what you liked or what you didn't like about the video. We'd love to know what you guys think. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency,